This story has to do with a very personal music experience in Apalachicola. I haven't talked too much about my Apalachicola music days. It's where I got my start with playing live music, and I always try to give homage to uh, Bill and Breeze, Jim Breeze, uh, and Bill Harris, that got me out of my comfort zone, so to speak. So... One time when I was running music there, I I play eclectic music to say the least. Warren Zevon, um, Jimi Hendrix, a lot of Clapton, Leonard Cohen, stuff like that. And I, I have uh, House of the Rising Sun, uh, Ain't No Sunshine, and other songs like that. And there were a lot of nights that nobody was there. Uh, either nobody or a full house. And there, there's one night that there was one gentleman that sat through the entire four hours from nine to one o'clock or whenever. And he had come up to me and he said, I've, I've told this story so many times that I'm forgetting what he said. Um, I want to thank you for playing my life or, or something of the likes and I'll, I'll edit this video. I'll put an addendum whenever I remember what it is. And I was like, sorry, sir, what's that sound like? He said, thank you for playing these songs or something. He said, you just played the theme track, the, this, the theme songs, the tracks from my life. I came down here to Apalachicola to die. He had very late stage cancer. He had just buried his brother who had the same thing. Didn't have any more family to go visit and say any peace to. He grew up in the area when he was younger or down the road a few counties and always loved Appalach. He came in. I did Knock on Heaven's Door. I did Little Wing. I did the aforementioned songs. I did um, Last Kiss. And he said that I played memories from when he was in elementary school all the way to high school prom dance and getting in his first car, A-Track, I covered the entire spectrum for his music. And I think the phrase was something like, I made his life worth it, the trip. Or, I'll, I'll stop trying to think of it right now. But... I've always caught resistance for the set lists I play by other musicians. It's never been good enough for them. They tease me. They do whatever. They hound me for some of the songs I play. Nobody knows that. Nobody likes that. This just helped a dying man um, come to terms with his life, and he enjoyed it. He loved. He loved everything I did. And it put his mind at ease in the last days of his life. And he said he's just going to wander up and down and go into a hospital or, or hospice or whatnot. And we, we talked for a while. It was, it was before the day of smartphones and having a camera on the phone. Just before that was common for everyone and the selfie culture had taken off. Um, or else I'd, I'd love to have gotten his information and share his story a little bit more. But also... I'm a firm believer that not if you're pointing a camera at everything, you're capturing it, yes, but you're not experiencing it firsthand anymore. You're focusing on an electronic device instead of focusing on the real, the in front of you. So this is one of those that very few people are ever going to see this video. I don't know who the guy is. I don't know um, how to identify or anything. If he survived, I doubt he did. It didn't, didn't sound like the numbers were in his favor. And... It's the biggest compliment I've ever gotten for music. Um, and when I think about how many people, when I think about how many people have disdain against me for 
the words I say, the songs I choose, the path I've taken, my criticism of other people and me standing my own ground. I think of this gentleman and I wonder how many musicians have gone through something so intimate and so pure that the songs they chose knowing they are not the most popular pick and they're not the ones guaranteed to get them hired back. I'm droning on. He enjoyed the music. It put his mind at ease after 60, 70 years on this earth. And it was good timing. 